So we are going to actually focus on the differential red law. In the typical differential red law, you are going to see the reaction rate is expressed as a function of your reactant concentration. OK, for example, here we have AA plus BB give you CC plus DD. If you write a differential rate law, the rate is going to equal to your rate constant K multiply your reactant, not the product, OK? Reactant concentration to certain power. They say it's to the power of N and the M. Where the K here is actually so-called the reaction rate constant. And then this N and M is actually so-called the reaction order. So the N is actually reaction order with respect to A. M is the reaction order with respect to B. The overall reaction order will simply equal to the sum of both. Give you a quick examples. If today I know there's a reaction, its differential rate law is R equals to K times A to the first power, B to the second power. Okay, assuming that's actually a differential rate law for certain reactions. Then the overall reaction order is going to equal to 1 plus 2 equals to 3. But the order of your A is going to equal to 1. Order or your B is going to equal to 2. The things that confuse the student most is because there are just so many terms that sound so similar. So that you actually miss a sign the things. The reason I go very slow is because I want to make sure that you know the difference between different terminology. For today, we are going to only focus on the differential red law. So one very important thing that you also need to remember is actually that the red law, this N and N, can only be determined by the experiment. By looking at the chemical equation, okay, because the chemicals Equation we're talking about is this, right? Okay, if you look at this, okay, you will not be able to actually predict the reaction orders. In other words, you will never actually write K is equal to the reactant concentration to the A's power or to the B's power. Okay, so this is never the way you got the correct differential rate law. The way you got the differential rate law, you got the order through experiments. This is actually an experimental result for this very complicated reaction. So you want to determine the rate law for this reaction. Okay, so what is the first step you do is actually you first write out the expected differential rate law. In order to do that, the first thing you do is actually you need to recognize what are your reactants, right? So here you should be able to see that reactant is actually this, this, and this. So you should be able to write your red law is going to equal to a rate constant K, multiply the reactant concentration, let's say to the X power for your BR O3 minus, Y's power for your BR minus, and then Z is power for your H3O plus. So that's actually the first thing you should do. Okay, every time you see a table like this, which you will see in your homework and you will see in your midterm, the first thing is actually write down what is the expected differential rate law. So well, actually I already write it here, right? So that is actually the things you need to write out first. OK, then what? The next thing is actually based on the data you got, then you just put it in. 
Okay, for example, if you look at your first experiment, okay, you put in the concentration of your BrO3 minus, Br minus, H3O plus, everybody's actually 0.1, right? And then you've got a rate. So that means actually from here you can write 0.0012. That is actually your reaction rate, right? It's going to equal to your rate constant K times your BrO3 minus concentration is 0.1. You don't know the order yet. Okay, so you put X over there. Then what? You repeat the same thing for your other reactants. Then you're going to have one equation now. The next step you do is actually you repeat the same thing for all the other experiments. So, for the second experiment, then I know I can write the rate is 0.0024. It's going to equal to a rate constant K times 0.2 to the X power, 0.1 to the Y's power, 0.1 to the Z's power. So I know 0.0035 is going to equal to K times 0.1 to the X, 0.3 to the Y, and then 0.1 to the z. Very last one is actually 0 0.0055 equals to k times 0 0.2 to the x power, 0 0.1 to the y's power, and then 0 0.15 to the z's power. So this is what we are going to get. Then what? Then you want to use this equation to solve x, y, and z. So when you do this, let's say this equation number one, equation number two, equation number three, equation number four. Assuming I am looking for solve for x, if x is the things I want to solve, you keep the concentration species for your y and z the same. That's the things that you need to do. For example, here, you can see that the concentration of Y is the same between your equation 1 and 2, right? The concentration for your Z is the same for equation 1 and 2. The only thing that's different is actually what? Here and here. So the things you are going to do is actually if I do 2, equation 2 divided by equation 1. Okay, on the left hand side, you're going to get a number of 2. So this divided by that is equals to 2. OK, on the right hand side, K and A, K and K cancels out. This term cancels out, that term cancels out. On the right hand side, only thing remain is actually 0 0.2 divided by your 0 0.1 raised to the X power, which is going to equal to 2 to the X power. Using 2 to the X power equals 2, therefore you can know X going to equal to 1. All right, so that's how you solve for X. So now if you want to solve for Y, you want to keep the concentration of X the same, Z the same, right? So which two equations you need to use? One and, three. one and three, right? So in one and three, you know the X, they are all both 0.1, right? Z is also 0.1. The only thing that they are different is actually your Y. So what you do is actually, if I do three over one, okay? So this divided by that is about equals to three. So K and K cancels out. X turn cancels out. Z turn cancels out. Then all you have is actually 0 0.3 divided by 0.1. That's three to the Y's power. Therefore, you know, your y is equals to one. So how about how do you solve your z? Which two equations to use? Two and four, right? So four divided by two. This is this divided by that, right? So it will be fifty-five over twenty-four. It's going to equals to k and k cancels out, right? X turn cancels out, y turn cancels out. And then you have 0.15 divided by 0.1 raised to the z's power. 
Okay, so if you do this, you got these equations, right? So this is equal to one point. Uh, so it's yeah, one point five to the z's power. Okay, so this is actually a part that most students is going to make mistake because you don't know how to actually operate your calculator to get a z. So if you do these calculations, the fifty five over twenty four will give you a number of around 2.3. So you can get to this point without any problem when you're using your calculator. But to solve your Z, the things you need to do is actually to take log on both sides. OK, when you use your calculator, make sure this is the things you do, OK? So you take log on both sides. Then you're going to get log 2.3 is going to equals to log 1.5 to the z's power. And this is actually equals to your z times log 1.5. OK, so this is actually a mathematical transformation that you need to know. If in the log, is, if it is a exponent, OK, you can move that in front of the log. So these are things that you should know you can actually say your z is can be calculated by log 2.3 over log 1.5. Yeah, so once you do these calculations, then you can get a number of two. For your x and y, it's easy, right? Because it's the first order, it's easy to see. But for your z, sometimes it's actually challenging. You should really know how to actually get these things operated on your calculators. Then once you have this, then you can actually say your ray is going to equal to K times your. So this will equals to one, this equals to one, and this equal to two. What is the overall reaction order? Four, Four right? What is the order for your BR minus? One, what's the order for your H3O plus? What is the value of your K? Can you know it? You can, right? Because do you know the rate? Do you know the concentration of each species? Do you know the X, Y, and Z? Can you back calculate your K? That's all you need to know for this. Got it? OK, 